Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India And uh, so, this is uh, our last lecture for uh, the season and uh, today I would be discussing about uh, the final uh, one which is left behind and till now we have been discussing quite a lot about uh, radiological modality. So, we started down uh, initially we did start with an optical modality for fundus imaging on uh, analyzing your blood vessels in the eye and then we went over to another interesting vascular structure which is present in radiology and that was about uh, vessels within lung CTs. And then we did discuss about uh, MR uh, lesion segmentation and following that we did have ultrasound tissue characterization. Now, if you look at this whole pathway we started with some optical modality which had a bit of microscopy and which was more of a uh, like in vivo application thing. So, the human is alive and on them and all of these imaging were going on over there eventually. So, ultrasound was where we did discuss about uh, computational uh, techniques being brought down in order to favor something which is called as in situ uh, histology. And uh, now what I would be discussing is a big data deluge which we are facing today and uh, this is about uh, biopsy and analyzing out biopsy. So, one specific uh, problem which I take down is from one of the challenges called as uh, chameleon and uh, this one is about metastatic region segmentation in lymph node biopsies. So, I will be coming down eventually one by one as to what is the disease pathology as I have been discussing with the other application areas as well and uh, cumulatively beyond that I would also be uh, uh, making you aware about uh, what the big data deluge in this particular problem is and then what we can do in order to solve it. So, overall the organization is uh, arranged something like uh, we have the challenges first and then I would be uh, once the challenge is introduced to you then I would be speaking about the rational and introduction to the problem which we are trying to deal in hand until uh, we are quite sensitive about the pathology which we are dealing with and the actual biological problem to be solved on the clinical side it would really be hard to understand as to what rational was there uh, when undertaking this sort of a problem statement solution. Then I would be discussing about the data set and uh, also showing you some of the comparisons and, and at length trying to discuss at least one of the solutions. So, I would be discussing about the winning uh, team uh, which had won this particular challenge last year at ISB and uh, what method they were using and then coming down to a end note as to what more you can read and where you can read it out from. So, the challenge uh, is what is called as chameleon and if you look over here then their mask banner over here says that it is a ISB challenge on cancer metastatic detection in uh, lymph nodes. So, uh, you can definitely go on this URL and this year it is uh, chameleon 17 dot grand challenge uh, dot org. So, the new version is already there and uh, up and it is running. Uh, so, the time when you are listening to these lectures it is still accepting submissions hopefully around that time. So, what uh, this whole challenge is about let us come down to uh, basic about on the clinics. So, uh, there is a main problem uh, a major cause of cancers uh, in women and then one of the second highest leading cause of cancer related deaths and that is called as breast cancer. Now, um, although a lot of women get affected by what is called as a breast tumor, but then not all tumors are cancerous. Now, in case say a tumor ends up being cancerous then what happens is that this uh, so a major uh, uh, appearance or a major attribute associated with a mass of tissue which is cancerous is that it starts proliferating or spreading out. Now, once it starts spreading out everywhere then uh, these cancerous cells they keep on spreading and affecting other organs as well and once they uh, sort of start going down to other organs and colonize over there. So, they release certain sort of uh, chemicals which change the local ambience around different 
cells present over there and the other cells also start becoming a cancerous. So, it is sort of a mob effect. So, if a mob is quite unruly and then it keeps on spreading everywhere, then these few unruly people can actually seed down creation of much larger mobs and that would disturb the whole community in a standard way and over here even cancers lead to that. So, whenever you hear about a problem called as uh, uh, multiple organ failures due to cancer metastasis, that basically means that this cancerous cancers were spreading down to multiple organs within the body and each organ kept on becoming unhealthy and cancerous and they kept on failing which which means they are stopping their normal uh, uh, course of whatever actions they were having. Now, so here generally what is done for uh, over here is that in, in breast. So, if you look at the breast anatomy then around the breast there are a lot of uh, uh, lymph nodes which are present. And so, in our body we have two sorts of circulation systems. So, one of the circulatory systems is the blood circulatory system on which you have oxygen and glucose and all of these transfers going on and the other one is the lymphatic circulatory system which we have in our body. Now, these lymphs, so as in our blood circulatory system you basically have the heart which is keeping on pumping this constantly, but in lymphs you do not have that. So, it is a much slow moving system and you need to secrete out lymph over there and that gets secreted out from the lymph nodes. Now, these lymph nodes are quite interestingly uh, located around this groin area and if there is a tumor over here, there is a high chance uh, this being a soft tissue they actually spread. Now, once they end up getting spread up and uh, affect down these lymphatic nodes over here, then all of them are going to spread down via this lymphatic node uh, network and that is going to create a major problem for us. So, uh, in general what is done is that when say there is a tumor and uh, a needle is inserted in order to pull out some aspiration or take a small biopsy via a code needle biopsy method. Then along with that the standard procedure is that after the treatment uh, a pathologist also draws out a sample from the lymph nodes itself. And from these lymph nodes they draw out samples in order to understand whether there is some sort of a metastasis or cancer uh, spreading out in the lymph node over there. Now, for that, uh, so what needs to be done is as a stage over here. So, there is the mass of tissue from the lymph node taken out and this lymph node is sort of a very small structure, it is about say uh, a centimeter or 2 centimeters in its diameter and then that is what has to be taken out. And now, you have to analyze very carefully whether all the cells present over there and it is pretty densely packed which has uh, and whether all the cells are perfect or there are some traces of cells which are uh, cancerous in nature. Now, uh, the traditional practice is uh, what is called as histopathology or uh, uh, like in, in standard terms histo is basically tissue is, is a name for tissues and pathology is understanding the disease pathway. So, it is disease pathway analysis and understanding within tissues itself. So, uh, the old technique over here was when say there, there is a technician who takes out these. Uh, so, there would be a doctor who pulls out the mass of tissue and there is a technician who prepares them into slides. So, uh, as we had done learnt on the microscopy side that you will have to do some sort of a processing in order to do that and we had also seen down the histology slides for uh, uh, oral biopsies. So, over here you will have similar kind of slides being prepared which are for uh, lymph node biopsies. And then uh, there is a pathologist who is a trained clinician, he is a medical doctor who is going to look down through. Uh, different regions of the tissue mass over there and then find out uh, how it is. So, this is a traditional practice which is till date followed in, in major parts of India and major hospital chains. But the problem, uh, so, so the major issue over here you see is that it is a manual procedure. So, you will have to take a slide, put it down and then observe with a microscope and, uh, and these slides they are not everlasting. So, you cannot preserve them forever. So, the moment you see it and then within a few days they might get corrupted and you have to discard the whole thing. So, in order to get rid of that and with the modern practices coming down where we would like to preserve medical records. So, we have one of the preserved medical records which we have is radiology reports because your MRCT all of them are digital and you can always take a CD drive or a hard disk on which you have your DICOM files which are saved and you can preserve them for long. So, you have some disease and you are treated and then you can keep those records for referral maybe even 20 years later on. So, 20 years later on if there are some traces of the disease again onsetting or maybe a side effect then you can again find it out over there. Now, in the modern practice what happens is that for these histologies as well we have a similar kind of an option which is through something called as a whole slide imager or a whole slide digitizer. Okay. So, 
what it does is you take that whole uh, that complete slide and you mount it onto a cartridge over here. So, there is basically a robotic microscope inside this box and what that does is that uh, it takes image of one portion and then slides the slide by a few millimeters or whatever resolution you need and then takes it. So, you have basically a tile of such images created. So, imagine there are multiple tiles in which you have the whole slide scanned down and then all of them are stitched together to get down a panoramic projection. So, the same way as uh, you do with your uh, normal photography which is you take photographs multiple photographs by rotating your camera and then you stitch it down using any of your panorama stitching softwares or freewares which is available and then you have a 360 degree view. So, over here we have a similar uh, view of the whole slide coming down and that is what is called as a whole slide image. Now, it is pretty good because what you would see down in this kind of a whole slide viewing workstation is this is a virtual slide on which this is where the mass of tissue is and since you could scan down the whole slide. So, you have a thumbnail and then you can pick up whichever slide you want to see and uh, then you can magnify to whichever region you want to see and since it is scanned over different magnification different optical magnification. So, you can emulate the same kind of behavior and the good thing is that you do not need to anymore sit down at a microscope physical microscope. So, the pathologist can actually say uh, get down digitized images coming over the internet uh, to him at some other location and uh, the images might be digitized at some other place. So, this would bring down this is what is enabling telepathology in today's world and uh, is not restricting any more that your samples would have to be sent down physically to a different city, but then a collection center in your small city rural places and everywhere can take down these uh, can actually collect your sample and then make them into slides and then digitize everything and then the super specialist pathologist may be located at some other nodal center at a major metropolitan city and still can do the reporting with it without you having to travel or your samples having to travel down to that major city which has other risks of sample degradation as well. So, now that we have this kind of a major uh, solution available it should really make our lives much easier. But uh, <laughs> the only challenge is it does not work out so easy and it is not so empirically straightforward. Because what we have today what we are facing is what is called as the big data deluge and uh, this whole big data deluge is around a condition. Now, while this is supposed to solve out, but then the problem is that uh, there is a cumulative effect associated with that and that is what restricts us from making use of this one and that whole problem is what is called as the big data deluge. Now, here if you typically consider one one of these examples then one virtual slide will have something around 97 and a half thousand cross uh, 2 lakh 20 thousand pixels and that together comes down to about 65 gigabytes of raw data in itself. Now, that is not a small number because imagine this one one single slide is equal to one pen drive one of your 64 GB pen drives of data itself. So, you would have to carry down one pen drive for every single slide. Now, while the problem was about archiving all of these large number of slides over time, you basically have the same sort of a cumulative problem just digitizing does not physically remove out your storage barrier because you are still requiring that huge amount of space. And the other major problem is that all the images which you have predominantly till now analyzed say for CT or MR they were just 640, 480 or 800, 600, 512 cross 512 they they the numbers were still in the range of less than a thousand and now we are speaking about numbers which are in the order of a million on one single dimension. So, this is about 1 million and this is uh, so this this is roughly about 1 million and this uh, so 0 0.1 million and this whole thing is also quite close to that uh, close to that. So, now imagine that that these huge numbers are what are going to cause down problems in the coming days and so large number of images so large number of scales over there is not something which we can very easily tackle up and with that problem in hand is what this whole challenge was designed over there. So, what we started down is uh, quite interesting because how the we had the images provided is on a standard way of uh, pyramidal decomposition format. So, typically images are acquired at multiple magnification as we had seen down in the lab scale demonstration that you can have different objectives with different magnification. So, here also on the slide digitizer which we had shown earlier uh, on the earlier slides you have similar kind of uh, objectives and one objective with a different magnification is used at a time. So, initially uh, images are acquired with a 1x magnification 
with a rough scan. So, that will give you more or less the overall architecture of the tissues present over there and then as you keep on increasing the objective magnification as we had seen on the week 1 lecture on microscopy. So, you get down much more detail about uh, uh, say the whole cell and then eventually on the nuclear cytoplasmic border and then internuclear content. So, here uh, this image was provided down in 3 different magnifications and that was put down into a TIFF wrapper and then you can use the open slide uh, framework APIs in order to read all of them. So, uh, please feel free to go through the website of the challenge and then you can download this data uh, by just doing a nominal registration uh, which is for free. So, it is just some information you have to put down and uh, you can download the whole data. Now, if you carefully look over here, I have it at uh, 2 different magnifications what is shown over here. Now, at a much lower magnification, you would be seeing down a whole jumble of cells and nuclei and just one level up of magnification, it becomes much more clearer over here. And this is the kind of interesting uh, way in which the whole data is available. Now, on the sample side of it, uh, we have the whole slide image sample as well presented over here and this is where you can see that uh, there is a lot of uh, diversity over here. So, if I am recording this image. So, this was typically recorded at 1 x of an optical magnification and then shown over here and the regions which are marked with these blue contours are the ones which exhibit distinct and steady state metastasis within the lymph node biopsy. Now, if you look a uh, majority part over here is just these white areas which do not even contain any mass of the tissue and then you have to look down uh, in a perfect way in order to find out where the actual metastatic part uh, within the tissues is present over there. So, this is the challenge which is faced down by today's community and although you might have a rough guess that maybe the textures are different, maybe the image intensity is different, but that is not always so because look over here the image intensity and nature of texture is quite similar to the intensity and nature of textures over here, but these regions are still not metastatic whereas these regions are metastatic and that is what is creating the main challenge for us and that is where the comes the goal of this particular challenge. So, the problem how it was defined is that given that you have a whole slide available at 3 different magnifications. So, this is taken out at 1 x, this is uh, at 10 x and this is at 40 x and at each different magnification if you keep on magnifying you would be seeing a different kind of manifestation. So, if you look carefully over here this part is what is the metastatic part and this is what is the normal tissue part over there. So, just by looking down uh, at say textures or intensities it is really hard to find it out, but then as you go down to granularity of information you will be able to find make out uh, distinctly as to where the border is located of segregating them and this is what forms down the main challenge. So, uh, assuming that say you want to apply some sort of a patch based method. So, now you will have numerous such number of patches because the smaller axis over here is about 97,000 and the larger axis over here is about 220,000. So, if you are even considering taking down 1000 cross 1000 image patches over here, you would be getting down 97 such image patches and on this side you will be getting 220 such image patches. So, a 1000 cross 1000 pixel tile you will be having 97 cross 220 such tiles present and that is not a small number in any way and you will have to run down analytics on them. So, this is where comes the big data deluge for you. So, you can do your basic math over here as to what is the pixel size and operator size, what will be the total throughput and what will be the total uh, computer power which you would be requiring in order to solve this problem. So, that is where this challenge was initially started down in 2016 and it was there was a lot of skepticism within the community as to how good they would be able to tackle this particular problem given the scale of compute which is associated with it. Then the good news is that it is not so tough actually. We have contributors uh, multiple of those contributors and this is just a list of the top 10 contributors from the day of the uh, challenge result dissemination. So, today there has been update on uh, the contributors over here. So, the winning team was actually from Harvard Med School and uh, MIT together joint team which had a AUC of segmentation. So, AUC is your area under ROC curve if you remember from the uh, first week's lecture on evaluation criteria. So, this was all evaluated based on AUC scores and based on the best AUC score they were all ranked one by one. So, the best winning team is who had a AUC score about 0.925. And that is not a small number because you are nearing 1. So, you do imagine that although this is a uh, compute problem at scale at a much larger scale because the dimension the amount of data you will have to deal with and the total throughput of power which you will have to put down is quite something uh, which is herculean. But then 
teams have been able to solve it and this has been solved within a human lifetime so not not so complicated with say within a week's time of compute is what would be required in order to solve it so without uh, taking and then if you see there are multiple teams over there and uh, there have been teams who have been participating from across the world onto this one now the winning team uh, on this one from mit and harvard together so they had actually uh, proposed a deep learning based uh, solution and what they were using is uh, they have a pre segmentation method taken down so remember this point that i was telling you that the whole slide is about uh, 97000 cross 220000 pixels over there but then majority of the area is just white blank area over there and you need to you can actually just say a small portion about 20 25% of the area is what where the tissue is located the actual biopsy tissue and you can actually choose out that particular uh, located uh, small part of the tissue so what they had done was a very uh, quick hack around that so use just a simple otsus method by which you can iteratively uh, you you can find out which is the best possible threshold and then do a binary thresholding and this is going to roughly give you the area where uh, the tissue mass is present now once you have this rough area around where the tissue mass is present then what they do is they randomly selected about uh, multiple patches so there were 1000 positive patches and 1000 negative patches of 256 cross 256 now this positive patches are what are uh, uh, the regions where you have a metastasis present and negative patch is taken from a region where you don't have metastasis present since you have the ground truth available with you as to where this metastasis is located that mark already available so now you can sample down randomly over all the over over some regions from that metastatic region and others from the non metastatic region on top of that they since the data set also had normal slides over there for training so they have taken down 1000 such negative patches from the normal slides so like anywhere you sample from the normal slide within the tissue region you are going to get a negative patch because that's uh, a negative they, they don't have any kind of a metastatic region present in anywhere so using all of these uh they they train down uh, one particular uh, deep learning network in order to do it and what they sh uh, report over here is that once you are doing this otsus based thresholding coming down you can actually remove 82% of the region on an average which is useless where where you don't have any tissue mass present at all and that is going to bring down your compute scale from that large onto a much smaller scale problem over here so these are some uh very intelligent pre processing techniques very simple but wise pre processing techniques you can always put down in order to scale down the computational overload for your system so the network which they use is uh, what is a state of art uh, google net so this is a modified google's modified version of uh, the standard linet architecture and what they have is uh, it's a 27 layer network in total and including some of these uh, uh layers which are called as inception layers so you can read much more details on the actual google net paper uh and on this one so since this is much beyond the coverage what i just wanted to point out is that since it's a very deep network with 27 layers so one problem is that you will have vanishing gradient issues coming down when you are trying to back propagate now for that one they have these inception layers over there which keep on injecting uh, extra errors onto it, the system and the way these inception layers work is these are very weak Clearly supervised classifier layers, which use all the features on a particular layer, and then they try to run a classifier and see whether it's working or not. So the the uh, the performance of one of these inject uh, inception layers, which inject down extra error, might be much weaker than the whole network as such. But cumulatively, they do a much better job in order to preserve a gradient to be transferred across the network while training such a uh, big network and. Uh, this network approximately has uh, 6 million parameters to be tuned down over there and finally what you get out of this network is uh, what they show is a heat map so this is a probability map of a region belonging to metastasis so typically if this is what you uh, give over here and then train it and then uh, on this particular test sample you would be seeing a heat map coming down so this is a probability that those particular regions or those particular patches they belong belong to a metastatic region now uh it appears more or less continuous over here because you have very small patches 256 cross 256 taken down from a whole slide which is 97000 cross 220 samples so they would approximately at a much smaller scale boil down to almost as if there is one single pixel which we are looking down but it's a collection of pixels which we are looking now with uh, this uh, initial uh, evaluation of the heat map coming down as to where the location of metastatic regions can be located what they do is they extend this one so 
they use this initialization coming down from the C, uh, from the CNN uh, Google Init, and then they start extracting multiple features from the uh, patches present over here. And using those features, they again train a random forest with uh, 50 trees, and then these predicts out whether a uh, particular slide over there has metastasic or is perfectly normal. So there are two problems which was being addressed over here. One is whether the slide is metastatic or it is not. The other problem was what region over there is metastatic. So you need to solve out both the problems over there. So together this is what they have solved out and uh, this is where uh, I would just draw a conclusion because there are multiple methods who have been over there. You can look through all the, all the presentations and PPTs are available clearly over there. So you can go through them as well and uh, where you can go down is. Um, if you go on the website over there and then click on results, you would be directed down to the leaderboard and on this leaderboard you would be seeing multiple of them and then you can click down on each of these links for a PowerPoint presentation and that would be downloading an appropriate PPT on which the details are present of the whole method in which they were uh, implementing this. So on the concluding note for this one as we come towards an end of the lecture as well as end of uh, this season of uh, the course on medical image analysis. Um, I would encourage strongly everybody to actually participate on uh, these kind of challenges which are currently ongoing including the Camelon 2017 challenge which is now up and do definitely make a note that uh, these references uh, provide a much uh, detailed appreciation for how you can do including the software tools and how to set up your systems and since we have already done some hands on uh, programming experience as well. I would strongly encourage all students to uh, really go ahead and participate in these grand challenges uh, for just, just not for the sake of learning but also for providing community driven challenges to uh, major medical image analysis problems we are facing today. So uh, with that uh, I come to an end and uh, thanks and all the best for your uh, upcoming assignments and examinations. So thanks, bye.